I think we're live now. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I can get a drink. <laughs> it's 8.30 our time. Okay. We're going to talk about debt today because I realized when we paid the last credit card bill off, that was the day that I realized how much stress that debt was causing me. Was it causing you that much stress? It was causing me a hell of stress. It was kicking my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, it's so nice to not have those credit card payments anymore that has that interest attached to it and everything else. And or those car payments. You can breathe. Yes. You can breathe. Well, and the thing about it is, is it felt like when you got all of those bills that you had to put up with whatever you had to put up with on the job because you did, you were afraid to lose your job because you had bills to pay, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like with a mortgage, you could sell the house, you could move to a cheaper place and let somebody else pay your bills, right? Like, but with credit card debt, mm -hmm. yeah, ain't nothing you can do. Nothing. Ain't nothing you can do. So we are going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how you can get out of debt and how you can stay out of debt. And you want to stick around to the end because we've got the pro tips and the magic on how you can avoid, right, lifestyle inflation. So we, we want to give a, a few definitions, but first, I guess we should introduce ourselves. Yeah, just in case. In case you do. Hey, y'all. My name's Halisi. And I'm Rick. Welcome to our Black Utopia. On our channel, we talk about travel, money, and retiring abroad. We help folks who look like us get their money straight. Get it straight. <laughs> so that they can retire on time or maybe even early. Because the thing about it is, if you are of a certain generation, you might not have planned appropriately. We certainly did, like did not, right? Like seven, eight years ago, we were getting close to retirement age, like yeah. in our 50s, right? We looked at our money and it looked crazy. It was crazy, y'all. It was really crazy. You wouldn't believe how crazy it was. Anyway, <laughs> he got to come up with something new every week, every week. That's you, Action VJ. That's you. <laughs> That's you. It's your fault. <laughs> anyway, so it looked crazy. But about four years ago, we did get our financial act together and we went from negative 22,000 to over 1.1 million in net worth. Yeah. If we can do it, you can do it too. So if money, travel, retiring abroad, if getting your money straight sounds good to you, if that sounds interesting, please hit that subscribe button right now. More than half of the folks who are watching do not are not subscribed, right? Hit that notification bell so that you know every single time that we go live or drop a new video, and that way you will not miss a beat. Don't want to miss it. You do not want to miss it. All right, we are going to say hello to some of the folks that are in the chat, but first, let's get to some definitions so we can all be on the same page. Okay. All right. Number one. Debt. Debt. D-E-B-I-T. That's debit. Do not get in our comments talking about mortgages and student loans. We're going to define what we're talking about today because this is the kind of debt that is crippling most Americans and especially the folks in our community. So what are we talking about when we say debt? I got to learn how to spell it first. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I misspelled it on my note. No, you didn't. It's spelled right. Well, I did, but you changed it. All right. So any money that is borrowed or spent on something that doesn't appreciate, that you can't really get any value from, you get good feelings from. If you go out there and you buy that Gucci bag or those that dress or that car, and you cannot get the same amount of money that you got when you purchased it. Or more. Or more. I mean, if it's a classic or something like that, you know, collectors. Then maybe. Yeah, that can appreciate. But then, you know, that's debt. That's, yeah. We're talking about usually credit card debt, right? Like uncollateralized debt, signature loans, mm. right? Payday loans. Payday loans, signature loans, credit card debt. 
um, maybe even student loans. What we're not talking about is a mortgage. We may not be talking about a car pain, a car loan unless you are upside down. Unless you bought a brand new car, put the minimum amount down, you're probably upside down. But if you bought a used car, put you know 30% down, 40% down, you're probably in good shape. The next definition that we want to talk about is lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep. When we talk about that. It's when folks inadvertently spend money because they are either making more money or they've gotten comfortable with the amount of money that they have. And they're inadvertently spending more money, not realizing that they're going over budget. It usually happens when folks get raises and things like that. Oh, I, I can afford that. I, I think I can get that. Yeah, I deserve. They get, I deserve. They get that, that tax, ref, the tax refund check. Yeah, yeah. You get a tax refund debt check and you have credit card debt. And instead of paying off your credit cards, you go buy a new TV, new big screen TV or some jewelry or something. <laughs> That's not a good look. That's not a good look, y'all. All right. So we're, you know, you all asked us. It's one thing to get out of debt, but how do you stay out of debt? How do you avoid lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep? Yeah. So we're going to start with how to get out of debt. But before we do that, let's see who is in the chat and say hello, Jess. Bom dia. Bom dia. Obiu pasoas. Happy Sunday to you too. We've got a new name here, Pop Luck Publishing. I noticed you earlier. Hey. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the OVU family. Hey, Tracy Stewart, good to see you. Um, oh, wait, you knew Paula. Okay, all right. Is this somebody we already know who's changed their name? I don't know. We got to meet with Killer Queen, y'all. Yeah, Killer Queen. Yesterday, we got to meet with Killer Queen. You guys have seen her in the chat. Hey, Action VJ, good to see you. Another week closer to the meetup. Mm -hmm. Y'all. Yeah. We have been the restaurant that we are hosting this thing. We have been there two more times since. It's still just so good. Oh, yeah. The food. The food is. The chef is on point. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Hey, Sir Panther Man. Good to see you. DDM Craig. What? Good to see you. It's been a minute. Hey, Winnie. Winnie it's B. been a minute. Winnie B. If, so here's the thing. If you don't ask a question and if I don't see you at the first, but you're making comments in the in-between, I might not see you. So if I say, <laughs> if I say it's good to see you back, but you've been here, <laughs> forgive me. But we do notice you. We do notice when you're not there. And hello, CK. It's good to see you. Diana, hey, Diana. is in the house. Vanessa, good to see you. Regina and Valerina is in the house. Diane Molden, Pinky, good to see you. Hey, Greta. Hey, Greta. Dion, Marie, voice you do voiceovers. Okay. Oh. This sounds like a new name, Dion. Good to see you in the chat. Bon dia, everyone. Mary, hey there. Still thinking about that food we got. I loved it. Hey, Jametta. Hey, Jametta. Good to see you. Rapper MD is in the house. Yes, yes. All right. Hey, Vicky. Hey, Vicky. Hope to speak to you and... <clears throat> On Wednesday, yep. Uh, Greta is in the house. Dovey Baker. That sounds like a new name. I think I've seen that. Have you seen Dovey? Uh, yeah. Or is it Dovey, like a dove, or is it Dovey? It's English is something else, right? Right. Ms. Cruz is in the house. Hola. Good to see you. Hey, Kimmy. Yakota is, is in the strong. house. Can't wait to see you in June in real life. Joyful One is in the house. Hey, Elle. Hey, family. Hey, Ellen, Winnie, Killer Queen. There you are. There you go. <laughs> there you are. Professor is in the house. Good to see you all. We love you. Hey, Adelia. Buenas tardes. Uh, buen noite, aquí. Um, good to see you in the house. And I will, I know I know, owe you an email and I will email you after this. Expert East Tax Talks. Okay. Y'all, we've got some folks in the house and we've already got the questions started. But first, let us get to the steps. Take out your notebooks. All right. Because we know that every single person who is watching knows that they cannot be financially free if they have 
uncollateralized debt. If they have debt for non-appreciating assets, Mm -hmm. what is a non-appreciating asset? Well, to appreciate, it has to go up in value. So if it's not going up in value, it's not appreciating, which means you can't sell it for more than you bought it. (laughs) It's as simple as that. And if you are borrowing money for things that do not go up in value, like, you know, real estate usually goes up in value, right? Mm -hmm. Like real estate. Yeah, that's not you. We know. We know that you cannot be financially free. There's no magic pill. No magic pill. Right. And so. It's a simple plan if executed simply, if executed consistently to get out of debt. We did it. We had about 25,000 in credit card debt, something like that. All right. Over, I mean, and, and that had built up. So God only knows what we ended up paying because that credit card debt started way back in 2007 when we went to South Africa that first time. That was a big deal. That was a big bill and I charged it. (laughs) And then when I got the student loan money, because this was part of grad school, did I use that student loan money to pay off the trip that I had to take in order to graduate? Mm -mm. No, I did not. Of course not. That's too much like right. No, I bought some more stuff. I bought some more stuff. You're telling on yourself. Look. If I don't tell the truth, then how are these folks going to believe that what we have to say is ha- has this value, is right? This is true. Y'all know, y'all know we we are not <laughs> we are not going to um, sell you a bill of goods. This thing is not easy, but it is doable. So we never paid more than the minimum. No. But here's the thing, guys. So we're okay. So number one, you should never pay more than the minimum. Um, or, or, or you should never pay just the minimum, but here's the thing. So let's just say your bill is, your minimum payment is $68. So I pay 75 or a hundred or a hundred, right? Pay more, you know, make it go away. Look, I'm doing the thing. I'm paying my bills on time. I'm paying more than the minimum, but here's the part that I'm not realizing out of that $68 minimum payment. About $58 is all interest. So if I'm paying $75, that means every every month only $20 is going towards the principal. And that is the problem. That's the problem. All right. And so, you know, so the number one, the first thing that you have to do. You have to assess your spending. And y'all know. When we did this, we were spending about a thousand dollars a month just on eating out. Eating out. And we were charging it. And we were not paying our credit card bills off 100% at the end of the month like we do now. So we were charging it and we were eating out, not wherever we wanted. I mean, we were not eating like $85 meals every week. Yeah, we weren't going to the top, top. No, we were going to Chili's. Chili's. Applebee's, right? But heck, we went to IHOP the last time we were in, in LA, and that was $80. $80 for Eight, IHOP. So $84 would be exact. And so change. I still have my feelings hurt. <laughs> I still have my feelings hurt. So the number one thing you have to do is assess your spending and know where your money is going. Know where you are wasting money. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, you know, we I love realize the subscriptions and stuff like that. Right. So, you know, you get those subscriptions that are like next to nothing, you know, a couple bucks, but they add four ninety nine, dollars And you forget about them. A lot of times you forget about them. And then are they monthly or are they yearly? Right. So some are monthly like Netflix and Spotify. I even have one that is like the Netflix for, for audio books. It's called Everand or something like that. Everand, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they only sometimes have what I want. So why am I still paying? And it just renewed about a month and a half ago. And I was like, oh, God, and I meant to turn that off. Meant to turn it- <laughs> you got to turn that stuff off. And if you've got those apps on your phone, those subscriptions, like for iPhone, it'll tell you what 
what things you have on subscription yeah. so you can go ahead and catch that. Apple made it a whole lot. It used to be a little difficult to, you know, stop a prescription, uh, prescription so, subscription or something like that. But Apple really made it a whole lot easier, especially when you're buying stuff through Apple and let you know that. Yeah. You can, all you have to do is push a button. Exactly. <laughs> and, and end it. So you, cause it's easy to forget. It's really easy to forget. It's, <laughs> I put, I put reminders on my calendar and still, and still. And so you need to, you need to know exactly how much you are spending, especially on, and I talk to so many of you, we talk to so many of you one-on-one -on -one, and I ask you, okay, how much is the, the, um, your, ob your monthly obligations, how much, what's your monthly nut, right? for housing, for transportation, healthcare. food and healthcare. And then you should have some budget for groceries and, and you know, uh, miscellaneous, right? And entertainment. Half y'all don't know that number. And if you don't know where your money's going, then your money is just gonna be, it's gonna fly away, y'all. So we had did one of our videos before about not being afraid to, to look, look at, at your, your numbers, money. not being afraid to look at your numbers, your money, because a lot of people, it's hard to do sometimes. Yeah. You know, and you want to just kind of leave it alone and <laughs> come back to it another time, but you really never get back to it. Exactly. So it's exactly. Best to just face it. Just face get it. Get it over with. I, and, and for me, like I deal best when I have a plan, like if stuff is looking crazy and then I don't have a plan, that's when I get neurotic about it. I really do. Um, but some people can just be, you know, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> I mean, then, well, <laughs> then you got to assess your debt. Yes. So number two, assess your debt. What you're going to do is create a, you can pull out all your credit. Well, we, I used to say, pull out all your credit card bills. Hopefully you guys are not getting paper bills in the mail anymore. If you are, stop that. Just stop it. That's how your, your uh, identity gets stolen. All right. Go to 100% digital bills. All right. So you're going to create a spreadsheet and you're going to put every single credit card that you have and any other loans that are non-collateralized. Even your car loan, if you plan on driving it until the axles fall off, um, even your home loan, if you plan to retire in place. Right. Right. Um, so all your debt on one spreadsheet, and then you're going to write down how much you, what that opening balance is, how much you owe. And then underneath that, what the interest rate is. All right. Is there anything else that they should be doing to assess their debt? Well, if you plan on retiring and living in your current home, you know, you want it and, and it's not yet paid for, you want to include right. that. Right, 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 right. And, and, but I, okay, but there's a way that you want to pay off. If, if uh, retiring in place is your plan, and you plan to retire in the home that you own and it's not yet paid off. I don't want to encourage you. And I've said this before. I don't want to encourage you to pay extra money per month. Don't give that mortgage company money, extra money a month. Don't do that. Don't give them extra money per year. Don't do that. Whatever extra money you were going to give that, give them, put it in something that will make you money. Right. Even if it's just a CD, put it in a CD and make money. And then when you've got enough money to pay that off, pay your house off, then pay it off. There is no reason why they should be making money off of your money right. when you can be making money off of your money. Okay. So, um, so that's, that's debt. And I think I'm going to talk about that again later, but you know, I, I thought about it. So I said, it. number three, <laughs> number three, create an unbudget. Yeah. Now, some folks might not know what an unbudget is. Yes. So I I did not know what an unbudget is, but between Adelia Borchardet of Picky Girl Travels the World and Paula Pant, I realized um, this is what 
To me, this is the smartest way for people who like me have a little ADD, for people who don't want to say, okay, I get $30 towards my clothing this year, this month, and I get, you know, $30 towards makeup, and I get $150 towards groceries or whatever. And boo, but I spent $175 on groceries. So now I gotta take money out of my makeup and pay uh, Rob neither <laughs> to pay. I'm not trying to do all that. I am not trying to do all of that. All right. And so once you know what your your expenses are, right? And what you, and you already know what your income is and you see that gap, you know what you have to save, you know what money you have to set aside to uh, to pay the debt. The money that you are going to set aside to either pay debt, create an emergency fund or invest in future you is going to be scraped off the top, just off the top. Mm -hmm. So if you say I can comfortably afford to pay $500 a month to pay off this credit card debt, that $500 is going to be taken right off the top. You're going to put that on automatic payment and you're not going to worry about it. And you say, I'm going to put for right now, I'm only going to put another hundred dollars towards my emergency fund and another hundred dollars towards future me. All of that goes off the top. Mm -hmm. That's what an unbudget is. And then you know whatever's left is left to pay everything else, right? So um, if you set up that automation, and that's what really saved us, like it's automated. I know that on certain dates, that whole credit card bill is going to be paid off. Right. So money better be in the bank. <laughs> money better be in the bank. And not only that, even in retirement, we still have, I'd say, if I did the math right quick, about 15 to 20% of our income going straight into our brokerage our accounts. Brokerage account investments, yeah. Right? Because that's how that's how you make sure that you not only get out of debt, but you stay, you out, stay, of out. Debt. You stay out of debt. All right. You got to continue to pay yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Um, especially if you didn't retire and reach full fire, which we did not. Y'all know we are on like post fire, barista fire, something like that. Um, we did not reach our full fire number yet. But my goal is we're going to reach that. Oh, we're getting there. We're going to reach that this 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 year. Right. All right. Number four. You want to read it? You want me to? You, 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 the, you the man. <laughs> Creatively reduce your debt. This is before you start making the payments. The the was before you start implementing the strategies that we're going to talk about. Y'all know about the avalanche and snowball, but for anybody who's never heard of it, we are going to go over what that is, and then we will take questions before we get to how to stay out of debt. No, I was going to say, sometimes, you know, uh, with credit cards, if you've been paying your credit cards on time and stuff, but you have high interest for whatever reason, you can negotiate with your credit card companies. That's right. You know, that's I mean, right. you can try at least. So that's number one. Uh, I would call all of my credit card companies and um, tell them they need to lower my rate, especially if I've been paying on time. And if they balk, say, you know, this is what I say. Oh, why didn't you tell me you didn't want me to be a customer anymore? Okay, got it. I'll pay you off first, right? They make money off of interest. That's how credit cards make money off of interest. And then the fees that they charge right. the, uh, the stores that use their credit cards. The fees that they charge the, the stores, right? So they want you... Um, they definitely want you to continue using that card and they're going to assume that you're going to continue to carry a balance. Little do they know you are on that debt free mission and you will not be you will not be carrying a balance after you get that paid off. Yeah. Right. So what was the other thing you were going to say? I was going to say when you get that those offers, a lot of times when you've been paying on your credit card on time and stuff, and they'll give you offers where you get a zero percent balance for a year or whatever, or, or, or two longer, years, yeah, or longer. sometimes. 
And, you know, where you're not being charged interest as long as you're paying on time. But the thing is, is if you get that and you accept it, you cannot miss, you cannot be late or anything because all that interest comes crashing back exactly. in on you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But we did employ this tactic in our strategy. And when we started getting, you know, it's either a, a, the, a set of checks in the mail yeah. or sometimes it's a new credit card offer that offers 0% for a set amount of time. Again, because our payments are automated, we didn't have to worry about something being late or not making that payment. But that helped us pay off our debt a lot, a lot faster yeah. because when you are paying 18%, 21%, some people are paying 27%, almost 30% interest. That means for every hundred dollars you spend, you spend you 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 gonna pay back a hundred and thirty dollars if you pay on time. Come on now, we ain't trying. <laughs> do I look like Boo Boo the Fool? <laughs> do, I, do I look like Boo Boo the Fool? Um, now with your car, um, if so, for some of you 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 have a high interest rate on your car, you can negotiate. You can refinance your car at a lower interest rate, especially if you when you got the car your credit wasn't so good and now your credit is better even with higher interest rates because i've heard of people having like 11 and 12 percent interest rates on their car the last one that we had our interest rate was 2.8 percent so anything above three or four percent i don't understand for i just don't understand but I have heard of some, I have heard of that. Some of you guys calling us are talking about these crazy interest rates. If your credit is better now than it was when you bought your car, see if you can refinance that interest rate, especially if you're planning to keep your car until the axles fall off. And then we talked about if you're paying your home, right? But we'll just repeat that. Um, so. I, you know, I said, if you're paying off your home, if, if paying off your home is one of your priorities, do not give the mortgage company your money. I said that already, but I'm going to repeat it. Do not give the mortgage companies that extra, that money. extra money. Take the extra money. If you've got, if you already have an emergency fund, you've got to have an emergency fund before you start paying off your house, because otherwise you're just going to get back in debt. Yeah. If an emergency comes up and you don't have cash, you're going to charge it. Right. So this is assuming you already have your emergency fund a good at least three months or something like that. All right. You've got your emergency fund. You're going to take that extra money you were going to pay on your house. You're going to put it in. You could put it in a money market account. You could put it in a high yield savings account. Mm -hmm. You can put it in a CD. You can all always just invest it in a brokerage account, especially if you've only had the house five years. Right. Five years from now, that money could double if you've got a 15 percent return rate. And you can pay off that house or 10 years from now. So you've, you know, you've paid it off, you know, 50% sooner. You see what I'm saying? But giving them the money every month. Uh -uh. Pays down the interest. It, it pays down the interest. But the thing about it is, is if you, if you do the calculation, you will see you can make, especially if you've got an interest rate of three or four or 5%. Right. You've got an interest rate of four or 5% and you can put it in the stock market. And you can make anywhere from seven to seven to fifteen percent. Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you do that? Right. All right. Number five. Create a plan. Yeah. So I, you know, folk, there. Okay. When we say create a plan, there are two, you know, main like strategies that have been banded around uh, amongst financial folks for the last 10, 15, 20 years. Snowball method. An avalanche. An avalanche method. Right. So we did the snowball method because I think because I have ADD. <laughs> In other words, I want the immediate gratification. So with the snowball method, you take the low, you because you've already done your spreadsheet, right? You've done your spreadsheet. You know how much you owe. So you know what those opening balances are and you know what the interest rate is. So with the snowball method, you're going to take the smallest debt and you're going to put any extra money towards that. 
So let's say that you have allocated, you can afford to allocate $500 towards credit card debt, but your minimum payments equal $300. You're going to take that extra $200 and put it towards that smallest payment. So let's say the smallest payment is $68. You're going to be paying $268 until it's paid off. And it'll be paid off much faster, right, than if you just paid the $75 like, like I was doing. Small wins. I like that. Small and when I saw, oh, then instead of paying five credit cards, now I only have to pay four credit cards. I like that. <laughs> I like that. So then once that first credit card is paid off, you're going to take that $268 and apply it towards the second smallest balance. Along with the minimum payments that you've already been making, you're going to put that $268 plus the minimum payment on that card. Mm -hmm. Boom. Pay that off, right? Now you're paying like three, 350 or something like that. Once that's paid off, you're going to take that 350 plus the minimum payment on the next card and pay that off. That is the snowball. You see, it's snowballing. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. As opposed to the avalanche. The avalanche one is when you look at the interest rate. Now, um, if the interest, for me, if the interest rate the highest interest rate also is with the smallest balance, then it's a win-win. Because <laughs> I want that instant gratification. But some people are smarter and don't mind the delayed gratification and say, you know what? The one that I am that is costing me the most, that's the one I want to get rid of first. Yeah. Right. So you take your extra 200 and you put it towards the one with the highest interest rate. It may have the smallest balance or the largest balance or somewhere in between. It doesn't matter. It's it's based on the interest rate and you're going to pay that off. And then you're going to take that 200 plus that minimum payment once that's paid off and apply it to the next one, the next one, the next one. All right. So it's the same principle. The only difference is you either start with the lowest balance or you start with the highest interest rate. And that's what the difference is. Um, as we said, we use the snowball method, but here's the key guys, because the first, when I first started, I was like, okay, I had my spreadsheet. This was like back in 2016, 2017, I had my spreadsheet. No, actually before that, yeah, I've had a spreadsheet. That. I've had a spreadsheet. You've since always like, had a spreadsheet. Exactly. Yeah. The spreadsheet is not the answer is in acting from the information, enacting a plan from the information that's on the spreadsheet. All I had was the spreadsheet. And then I was like, okay, so at the end of the month, if I have some extra money, I'm going to put it towards this. How you guys think that worked out? How you think that worked out? <laughs> We're here to tell you it did not. It did not, right? We went out to dinner. We went to some plays. We went to some concerts. Because you'll always find a way to replace We can that. find a way to spend that yeah. money. And then we thought, well, we'll get another well, we'll check. Get we'll, right. Yeah, we'll replace that. We'll, well next, next month, month we'll do it. We'll next month. We'll extra maybe next, next month. Next month, right? Like when you tithe. I got you next month, God, right? <laughs> I got you. So it never happened. So once we got serious, we automated Every when it comes to money, you need to automate as much as possible because there's so much emotion around money. Yeah. Right. And so if you automate it and it comes off the top, just like your investment in your future self is coming off the top, then you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Put your payments on auto. Yeah. Otherwise, um, don't be like me. Don't be like me. And talk about I'm a, whatever's left over. Now, if you put it on auto pay and then you say, in, in addition, anything right. that's left over, I'm going to make even more of a payment. That's that's another story. That's thing, yeah. Go for it. Right. But um, <laughs> but don't let that be your only story. Don't let that be your only plan, your only strategy, your only tactic, because that ain't going to work. All right. So we have number one, assess your spending. Number two, assess your debt. Number three, create your unbudget. Number four, creatively reduce your debt. Number five, create a plan. Decide on which strategy you want to do, snowball or avalanche. Number six. Celebrate your milestones. My favorite part. <laughs> it's, it's important to stay motivated. Right. You know, uh, on this because 
it can get you sometimes. It's like, oh God, you know. Exactly. I think it was Aging Graceful. If you if you are not following their channel, you should check them out. I think it was them who asked us, how do you stay motivated to pay off the debt? How do you stay out of debt once you're there and not allow this lifestyle creep? It's easy to right. creep. And it really is easy. Creep, it really creep. is it's easy. easy. But you know, in this debt-free journey, what we don't want is for you to feel totally deprived because that's not going to help you. That's not going to help you stay motivated, right? And so you hit a milestone, you've paid off that first credit card, you know there's like a $100 wiggle room in your budget. Take that $100 and go, you know. Go treat yourself. Treat yourself, right? Go out with the girls, go out with the boys, yeah. go out with your, your partner or whatever. Um, experience something, buy something, whatever. like treat yourself. Treat yourself um, because 100% austerity is for the birds. And we're not in this life just to be austere. <laughs> right? Yeah. Seriously. All right. Number seven. And this is a big one. This is so important. Build an emergency fund. You got to build an emergency fund. Even when you're paying off debt. That extra money at the end of the month, put in your emergency fund, but a portion of your money, even if it's a small portion, should be going towards this emergency fund. Because if small emergencies come up and you've got an extra, some people don't even have a thousand dollars saved, right? But if a small emergency, say something happens with your car and it's 400 bucks and you've got a thousand dollar emergency fund, that's $400 that you don't have to add to your debt. Okay. So an emergency fund is is essential in remaining debt free. It's essential to financial freedom. And um, so we suggest once your credit card debt is paid off, then you want to put all of that extra money towards your emergency fund until this is the minimum, minimum. <laughs> if you are married and a working couple. Three months, three months. If you are a single working person, then six months, six months, right? If you're trying to retire, become financially free, and you don't have, you have not reached your fire number, we suggest two years, two years living expenses. So three months living expenses if you are a married working couple, mm -hmm. minimum six months if you're single, and two years if you have not reached fire, but you like, you know what? This is enough. I'm out. That was us, right? Two years living expenses plus the money that I can't touch because it's in our retirement account. I'm not old enough to touch yet. And um, and that should ensure that you do not have to get back in debt, especially if you are living outside of the United States. And I say that because healthcare is a beast and any little accident can throw your whole plan off kilter mm -hmm. when it comes to the healthcare system in the United States. But if you are in a place where healthcare is affordable, where healthcare is actually a right and not a privilege, then three, six months and two years should be plenty to keep you afloat. And then number eight. Increase your income. Some of us just need to increase our income. Part-time right? job. Right, part-time job. Um, <laughs> Fail stuff. Sell the stuff, sell that that crap that's in your closet with the tag still on it. That dress that you bought that you can't get. Why got to be a dress? Why can't it be a suit? Because. Why can't it be some brogans? Why got to be a dress? Okay. okay. <laughs> Why can't it be some gators? Could be some gators. <laughs> so a friend of ours. Folks ain't selling his gators. You know he ain't selling his gators. I ain't say his name. He ain't selling his gators. <laughs> friend of ours lo loves some alligator <laughs> shoes alligator boots, whatever, right? Like the stuff that you have around your house that you are no longer yeah, using is over. gently used, bless someone them, else. Them golf clubs that you, them pings or hell, well, I don't even know what the good golf clubs are, any, are anymore, you know, but you know, we spend a lot of money on a lot of things. Skis, I got skis. And skis, we're worse than kids. Right. We're like kids after Christmas. Exactly. You stick it in the garage and you forget, forget about, about it, it and it just sits there. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so you can get a part time job, sell the extra crap that's in your house, um, start a side hustle. Right. And um, get a roommate. 
Yeah. Right. Getting a roommate, like house hacking, ha housing is probably your most expensive, your, your most uh, yeah, expensive expense. Right. <laughs> right? Um, it usually takes, they say, a third of your budget. Um, when you get a mortgage, they will approve you for a third of your income. I think you should never spend that much. I, we, we, when we got our house, we said no more than 20% of our income. And it actually was 19% of our income when we got our house. So when the fit hit the sham back in 2008 and um, the housing market crashed and people were upside down, you know, we were fine. I got laid off. We were fine because it was 19% of our combined income. So even with one income, we were able we're to ready, continue we, yeah, to, to, to make those house payments, right? Um, but getting a roommate is an option. Yeah. Getting a roommate is an option. Downsizing is an option. That doesn't add income. Getting a roommate adds income. Airbnb being your basement is income. Airbnb being your guest house. Is people, income. People even rent their garage if they got like a two car garage or, or you know, depending on where you live, depending on where you live. Right. You can rent your ga that. garage out as storage or you can rent your garage out as garage space, even if in a condo uh, complex. Mm -hmm. I know of people who don't have cars, especially like in New York, Chicago and places like that that are very, very dense and they rent out their mm -hmm. parking parking space, yeah. you know. Y'all think creatively, think creatively how you can easily yeah. increase your income. Now, pro tips. <laughs> Erase your credit cards from your computer memory. Don't make it easy to shop, y'all. <laughs> right? Online. All of my, like the credit card, and then you just put your fingerprint on there and it, and it pulls up all your information. That's too easy. When we were back in the States and I was ordering Amazon stuff actually for the condo and I was realizing how easy it was and it didn't even feel like I was really spending money. I'm like, mm, yeah, mm, this is too easy. Yeah, it is. It this is too, is easy, too easy, right? And then the other pro tip. Unsubscribe from all vendors. Yeah. Right. And so all of these emails that you get, like I, I get Ulta, I would get the loft, I would get Ann Taylor, I would get Nordstrom's. I unsubscribe from all. Oh, coach. I, I unsubscribe to all of it because every single time, especially when we were on our debt, debt reduction oh. journey. Sporting good stores. Right? Ooh. They would come in my email and I'd look, ooh, it's on sale? Ooh, I'd save how much? Knowing that the last thing I need is another damn coach back. The last thing I need is another damn coach back. All right. So um, one more time and then we're going to get to some questions and then we're going to get to how you stay out of debt, how you avoid lifestyle creep. So... Number one, assess your spending. Number two, assess your debt. Number three, create the unbudget. Number four, creatively reduce debt. Right. Call them folks. Call them folks. Threaten them. Uh, number five, create a plan. Number six, celebrate milestones. Give number yourself th credit. Right. Mm -hmm. Not credit. Give yourself credit that you did it. <laughs> Give yourself props. <laughs> <laughs> number seven, build an emergency fund. And number eight, increase your income. All right. So those are our eight steps that we use to reduce and eliminate all of our uncollateralized debt, all debt except for our mortgages. Right. Go. Go. Oh, I still have a student loan, but, you know, I am on an income based re repayment repayment plan. That's why it's very important. Do not get those private student loans, y'all. Mm -hmm. Do not let your don't don't do a parent student loan. Don't get a private student loan. Don't do any of that stuff. You will regret it. All right. All right. Are we are we going to lunch soon? Are we going to lunch soon? I think we are. Hopefully we are. Um, I love this. Give yourself grace, right? 
you, the folks who are newer and don't know our story, you know, I'm just going to say, I believed that being financially responsible was paying your bills on time and keeping your credit score up. Yeah. Financially responsible in my world, in how I was taught, was not about staying out of debt. Now, interestingly enough, in my parents' uh, younger adult life, there were, weren't really any credit cards. So how would they have taught me how to manage that? You know, they didn't start getting credit cards until until they were really high earners. And so, you know, they couldn't they could not transmit what they did not have to give. Something else on credit cards. If you have credit cards, because, you know, usually people have more than one. Yeah. And they might have one that they use all the time. And, then you know, they might have five. And they just use one particular one for points or whatever. And the other five, they keep them open, but they're not really using them. Right. If you're not using credit cards, lock them. Go online and lock them. Don't don't get rid of them. Don't cancel them because that dings your credit. Right. But lock them so no one can come and use them right. or abuse your credit or anything like that. Anytime yeah. you're not using them, lock them. Yeah, lock, we lock our credit cards and we freeze our credit. It's very easy to unlock it and unfreeze it. Gym memberships. Mm, yeah. They lock you into those contracts. And I don't know, some of you who look real, real good may be using them gym memberships, but I'm going to tell you, ooh, I'd be on it for about three months. Every other day I'm in there, I'm doing the thing, I'm taking advantage of the sauna and all of this stuff that I just had to have. About six months later, I'm trying to get there on Saturday morning. Ooh, ooh, I'm tired. Y'all, don't do it. Do not do it. And, and here's the bad thing. We had a, a weight machine in the basement. We had free weights, hand weights. A huge backyard. What did I need a gym membership for? What did I really need a gym membership for? Mm. Mm. Just spending money. Just spending money. When I got serious about becoming debt free, I started paying the mortgage payment plus the accrued interest today so that every payment was a true balance payment. If, again, if you are planning to, you know, now CK probably started this from the gate. So that's a different story. But if you're right now saying, oh, shoot, I do want to retire. I'm tired, you know, but I still, oh, you know, I've only lived in our house for 10 years, et cetera, et cetera, right? Again, putting extra money, giving extra money to the mortgage company. Uh, uh -uh. Uh -uh. Yeah, let it make money for you. Let it make money for you. Let it make money for you. All right. Um, and then if you do not plan on uh, retiring in place and you're going to rent it out, let the renters pay off your mortgage, right? You can always put more money towards it if you, like, I might want to move back or something like that. Um, but I'm not giving those mortgage companies any extra money. Um, groceries. Really, people? That's bigger than your rent or your mortgage in sedium. Interesting. Hey, ADHD, cutie on solo travel duties. Sorry, I'm late and you're never late. You are, ne <laughs> you are never late. All right. Um, Jess says, do you have a budget spreadsheet to link below? No, um, I don't do that budget. I don't do that. So we suggest, and I can put these links um, below, and I don't have a pen in front of me right now. I guess I can put it in the computer. Um, we were using Mint by Intuit. That's gone away. Right That's right. gone away. Um, personal Capital is now Empower. And there's a few other online tools by reputable um, financial companies that keep your information as safe as they can keep it. Um, and so that's what we use. That's how we know what our net worth is. We've got it connected to, um, to 
all of the important things so that we can see where our money's going, make sure that we're on budget and see what our net worth is at any given moment. Um, there's one, and Adelia, if you're still in the audience, if you could put in the chat, there's one that um, Adelia talks about that actually, especially for travelers, will take um, the money that you spent, let's just say you spent some euros on your European vacation, it will take that and translate it back to dollars or vice versa, right? So that you can get a true measurement of what your budget is and not have to do those conversions um, in real time. So there are a few out there. And if you are in Beyond the Bling, those links mm -hmm. are in the resources. Um, I'm not doing a spreadsheet, Jess. I, I ain't doing that ever again. <laughs> ever again. Hey, Krishan. Good to see you in the chat. Y'all know that we are doing our meetup in June, which um, Action BJ was talking about. And if you are just now tuning in, you definitely want to, and you're thinking about coming in June, or you know someone's coming in June, we will have fun, y'all. We're going to have fun. CK says, please check for early payoff penalties. Yes. Yeah, yes. Definitely. Check right. Like out. I do not get a home loan that has an early payoff penalty. I just refuse. And you should refuse. Just refuse. Just refuse. Um, here, the thing that they ask for here in Portugal, they ask for life insurance. Just refuse. No. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not getting a life like who. Right. And then they probably they probably suggest which company you should get your life insurance plan from. So the banker and the and the, and the insurance company are in. No, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Um, OK, any more questions before we move on? I see you guys talking to each other. <laughs> oh my gosh love it love it i am not i i used to be boo beautiful uh but no longer no longer hey karen louise hey good rossini good to see you in the chat uh scrolling through here diamond forbes i successfully paid off my lower balance one and now i'm working on the highest interest cool. paid one congratulations congratulations we love to hear it it's so obvious and so simple that sometimes it is because there is an emotional thing that we have when it comes to our money there's a lot of fear around money right mm -hmm. and i was just talking to one of my best friends today and she's like that's my fear i just don't want to run out of money and and i said well if you're if you're if your pension your or the allocation cuz she's she's younger is $3300 a month bitch don't spend more than $3300 a month you won't run out of money She's like, yeah. And then she's thinking about her discipline and thinking that ain't going to work. <laughs> but it is a game changer. And once you get that stuff on auto pay and you've got your strong emergency fund and you know that you can afford anything, just not everything, as Paula Pant says, right? You can afford anything, just not everything. And you listen to the rest of this when we talk about how to stay out of debt, y'all, it is a game changer. It is a game changer. And you will no longer have that fear uh, when it comes to money or go from, we, we've talked to people who have 500, 600, 7, 8, 900,000 mm dollars -hmm. between brokerage, savings, 401ks, et cetera, semi-cash. And, the, and, and they're like, but I just don't want to be homeless. Plus the house. And it's like, okay, so how'd you get from a million dollars to homeless? How's that work? Connect the dots for me. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Hey, Deborah, good to see you in the chat. Getting serious and consistent is the key. Just do the dang thing, y'all. 
And I, I, I'm not going to comment too much because some of this is speaking on how you stay out of debt, but it really is a mindset, right? Just yeah. do the dang thing. Seriously. So Lois says, after paying off all credit cards, how do you or should you close them out? Um, we don't close them out. No. Like I said, uh, just lock them, freeze them. As long as you're not using them, you know, they'll end up closing them themselves. They will. But I don't close them out because it dings your credit. If you're not worried about your credit, close it out. Yeah. Um, some of them I keep for for certain instances. Like I've got an Amazon card, for instance. And um, I use it when I shop on Amazon because then you get points that you can use for other Amazon purchases. Mm -hmm. And usually I'm purchasing things for my parents and getting them sent to where they're staying, right? Oh, they need some, some new underwear or uh, some shoes or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then every third or fourth purchase, I got a $30 credit to get them a free pair of shoes or something like that, right? And so even though I only use it for that reason, um, I still keep it open and it keeps a zero balance until I use it and then I pay it off and it's back down to zero balance. We do have some credit cards that had zero balances for too long and they're like, yeah, no. Yeah. You got I, to I've, I've had a couple of the, the credit card companies say, well, you know, they'll send you a notice and if you don't use your credit card, since there's been no activity on it for usually a couple of years, and, you know, if you want to keep it, I, I mean, my Amazon card, wow. I think, you know, we were talking about that one time and I just didn't use it anymore. And you said, well, hold on to use it. And I made a small purchase and paid it right off, but that just kept it going. So, you know, they didn't cancel that because it was an Amazon and we use it on Amazon. On Amazon. So different things yeah. like that. You know, if I got one, I don't. Well, my. United card, though, but that's Chase. So. Yeah. Any cards that don't give us any benefits. Yeah. They, they're we let them We let them close. They're locked. And if they want they're to locked, close them, they, they can close. Feel free to close them. But any cards where we get travel points or we get some, some money towards, a, you know, future purchases and that, that shouldn't expire anymore. That should be against the law at this point. Uh, points expiring should be against the law at this point, especially when they're bonus. Um the, the ones that you get for signing on, right? Um, I think it's against the law for them to to eliminate those. So if it's a credit card that doesn't give me something, I ain't using it, forget you. But um, if I get some points or I get some money back, then I use yeah. them from time to time. Yeah. What do you do with the card after the debt is paid off? We kind of answered that. Keep the card to keep credit score or close it. Yeah, we just talked about yeah. that to stifle temptation. Just lock it. Now, stifling temptation. I want to hear about that, CK. Here's the thing, because um, we know we've heard from folks who talked about, oh, now that I'm out of debt, I'm afraid to use my credit cards. I'm afraid to use my credit cards. Um, again, we don't use any credit cards that don't benefit us, that don't have something that we get in return, like travel points. <laughs> we are about travel points right. for the most part, right? So if it doesn't have travel points, we're probably not using it and they're probably going to eventually close it, um, you know, the way it goes. But as far as temptation goes, if you have things on automatic payment, there's no temptation. If you are a afraid that you will spend out of control, but you want to collect points. We've said this before. One of the things that we suggest, you're, you're out there, you're buy, you bought your groceries, like we put everything on credit cards, everything, groceries, everything goes on the credit card so we can get those points and then we pay it off at the end of the month. It also is easier like to figure out where your money's going if everything's on credit cards. I mean, we carry cash because some of the fruititarias and things like that don't mm -hmm. take credit cards. But I would say 95% of the places that we do go to take at least Visa MasterCard. We use those for everything. Come, you, you bought your groceries, come home, get online, pay the bill. Yeah. Or 
Every time you get paid, get online, pay those bills. So every two weeks or twice a month, however you get paid, right? Or some government folks every month. Yeah. If you're every month, you might want to go back to every two weeks in the in-between or every week and pay off that credit card bill. And that's how you can avoid and know if you can handle right. using your credit cards and paying off that whole balance. But again, usually on credit cards, they're not going to cancel your credit card unless it's been a couple of years of non-usage. Yeah, and it was a few years. Yeah, it, it, it's, it it's usually like two years two, or something three, like that, years. not using it. And then they'll say, hey, you know, well, and if, you, if it's that important for you to hold on to it, purchase something that for you, a couple that you bucks mean. and pay it off. Or buy your groceries yeah. that week with the credit card and yeah. pay it and, off. And pay it off. And that right? keeps you going. And that keeps it. Yeah. Um, hey, Damaris. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, it is off subject, but that's OK. As far as the Portugal meetup, there are still there's still room left for both the boat and the reception. Um, I think there's only about 15 spaces left for the boat excursion. And we already did receive our proposal from Soul Kitchen and Bar. So the price, as soon as I talk to Krishan, hey, Krishan, as soon as I talk to her offline, <laughs> the price will be going up. <laughs> so um, because we, you know, we were charging what we were charged last year, and it is actually going to be a bit more this year, what the vendors are charging us. And so all of the people who got in from the Move to Portugal Summit and got that great price at 150 euro, all the people who got the early bird and paid last year's price at a 173. Um, it is, he's fixing the light over there. It yeah, is yeah. a little bit more expensive. So we're going to have to make up the cost. So if you want to come, you might want to buy your ticket today before Krishan and I talk. <laughs> before we talk. Pinky says, staying on budget is the only reason I've been able to stay out of debt. It, if it isn't there to spend in the first place, where's it going to come from when it's time to pay? Hello. You should have put a cue in front of this, Pinky, because you are so on point. Why haven't we talked? I did not know that you were interested. You have our phone number, hit us up and tell us what you're thinking about. We also have one spot left for the side hustle challenge, which is next week. Yes, not this coming week, but the following week. Mm -hmm. I have decided that a few of the sessions will be at lunchtime and then a few of the sessions will be in the evening. That way, if you can't make the lunchtime sessions, you can make the evening sessions. We are going to record every group coaching session. And so, and there's, um, uh, there will be space for you to submit your information so that we can review it. And we will talk about everybody's information online. So even if you cannot make the group coaching, if you submit your stuff and put your questions in the community, they will be answered on video. All right. And then you can meet the other one. You can, you know, catch up on the other one where you can make us live. Right. So side hustle challenge. There's only one spot left, y'all. One spot. And then after this, I'm probably going to have to turn it off because I'm sure that one spot's going to be gone. All right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I, I, same here. Same here. I, so I use my skis and my skis will be coming here because my dream is to ski the Swiss Alps. And I don't want to go up to where the ice is. I'm a California skier so, and, and a Colorado skier. So I am very, very spoiled. But I want to ski the Swiss Alps. Um, since I started thinking of my money as freedom dollars. Right, Pinky? I added a few more dollars to my savings account every month, right? Cool. Every dollar, in my opinion, should have a job and is a freedom unit. How many freedom units do you have? 
because it, it's interesting to me, you know, I was talking to my friend today and, and we were talking about all the frenemies of our past, right? All these nice, nasty people from the United States and how the majority of the people that we meet who have made this plunge are just so gracious and so kind. Oops. And um, I, I still, though, have to hear from people who think that they should tell me how to behave. Oh, yeah. And this is the first time in my life that I could be truly authentic and say what's on my mind without fear of repercussion, because I'm never going to say anything that would, you know, create, cool. yeah. create treason or some crazy yeah. crap like that. Right. I'm never going to say anything that is cruel or or in my mind, untrue. <laughs> um but there are certain beliefs that I'm passionate about, right? And um, and I just remember, you know, someone someone came here to to Lisbon, and um, they were not nice to me in the United States, but they came here and they thought they should reach out. I had to pretend to like you when I was in the United States because you had some some juice, and I needed that job because I had this debt. But now I don't have debt and I don't need that job. I'm not fixing to play these games with you, right? Freedom, freedom. You wonder why I was so stressed the heck out when we had that, we had all that debt is because I knew I had to put up with people who I didn't want to put up with. And I had to because I had gotten myself into debt. Just a reminder, the private student loans have statute of limitations like any other debt. Thank you, Adelia. Yes, yes, yes. Look at your state laws too, because it's the, that I, I do not believe that they fall under the federal laws. If you live in California, the state of limit, uh, the, the statute of limitations is this. In Colorado, I believe the statute of limitations is four years, three to four years. That's right. That's right. What is what's the statute of limitations? in North Carolina, in New York, in Georgia. So look that up when making decisions. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Adelia. Uh, hey, Exquisite Coils. Okay, do you do hair? How do you lock your credit cards? You wanna answer that? Oh, uh, you can go online to your credit card companies and go to security and then the security hit the security tab and it will give you information on how to do it it's very very simple you click a button tell it you want it to lock and you can lock it uh for a certain amount of time on some of them or some of them you can lock it until it is uh until you open it back up Right. When I was getting a new uh, card, when we got our new Bank of America cards, before I got it, I knew it was going to take time to get to me. I locked it. So if anybody took it, stole in the it mail out of or the mail, anything, you know, or yeah, stole it out of the mail or, or mailbox or whatever, because I had it sent to our address in Denver. Uh, well, they sent it to Denver and they sent it to me. Chase sends my credit card straight to, to Portugal. Lisbon. But still, the chance of it getting lost or stolen, I lock it. Mm -hmm. Until I receive it, then I unlock it. Yep. Yep. And then to freeze your credit. You go to the credit credit uh, bureaus. Bureaus. Yeah. The three major credit bureaus and, and yeah. tell them you want to freeze it. And I can't even remember what they are. Uh, TransUnion, Experian, Experian and uh, another starts with an E. Experian, TransUnion, and I oh my goodness, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But you have to do each one you of them. Do separately. each one of them. Yeah, and you just go to them, and it's pretty much the same process. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to call anybody. You don't have to talk to anybody. But you just put in your information and say, "I want to freeze my credit." Yeah, and. Adelia, thank you. You're the one who taught me that we should do this. Um, I also freeze the credit of my parents. So if you are a caretaker or if you have parents that, you know, freeze theirs as well, 
you've got your power of attorney, go ahead and freeze their credit as well. Um, and that, that was, that was a, a big thing because my, as y'all know, my mom was giving away her information on the phone. That's going to drive me crazy now. Um, what's that? The name of the other credit bureau. Experience? It's not equity. It's not, I keep thinking equity, but it's not that. Somebody in the chat is going to tell us what that third one is. Yeah, what is that third? I love this. I heard and relearned all of this before, right? This is not rocket science. And we're saying the same thing in the way we say it that everybody else has said. The hardest part is staying out of bondage afterwards. And that's what we're going to talk about next, Rachel. Uh, Rachel Hill, this seems like a new name. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for participating. All right, Kimmy, you're good. Because something just renewed without me knowing it. You are good. I'm, I'm trying to tell you. But if also, if you, if you do freeze your credit, just remember, you can't put in for any new credit. or You got to remember to turn it back on <laughs> because it, it will, you will get denied. And you don't want to do that if your credit is frozen because then you get a ding against your credit. Exactly. So CK um, elaborates and said she failed to mention or he, they failed to mention that they're in their late 50s, my age. I started paying off my mortgage back in the days when the cost to invest with brokerages was beyond my means. And that's the thing. So those of us of a certain age, we do have to give ourselves grace because in the 80s, if I remember correctly, you do not walk into Fidelity unless you have at least $25,000 to invest. How's that? So the internet and all of this really has democratized investing. And what we have to do is do whatever we can to become comfortable and, um, and, and to learn about investing and know that it's not rocket science. It really, really is not rocket science, okay? Uh, we turned our financial act around in three and a half years, but started investing right away, very simply with index funds. All right. Keep it simple. Automatic diversity, low fees, index funds at the brand of the company that you are investing in, the brokerage firm. So another Fidelity in index funds at Fidelity, Schwab index funds at Schwab, Vanguard index funds at Vanguard. That way you don't pay extra. All right. And that budgeting tool. Thank you, Adelia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Tosh. you. Toshel Tosh, Finance. Yeah, Finance. And I'm signed up with them, too. So you think I remember. I see the emails but now. That, but it, brain fart, yeah. you guys. Same with the, the, the credit agencies are Equifax. Equifax. I knew Experian. it was Equifax something. <laughs> Equifax, Experian and TransUnion. Right. OK. Those are your major three. And those are the three that you have to go to to freeze yeah. your credit. Just go to their website. I would do it even if I weren't moving out of it. Had I oh, known yeah. that that was a thing, I would do it um, all the time. Just keep your, your credit frozen. You can unfreeze it. Like I ha when I put my name on my parents' accounts, I had to go in and unfreeze it so that they yeah. could do the thing. And then it, you know, and it's done instantly. It's done instantly. And then yeah. as soon as they put me on their accounts, I went back in, had my little um, iPad and I froze it again. All yeah. right. Um, so I would keep my, my credit frozen from now until the end of time. So Ellen X says, Oh wait. Um, se sexy Ellen X. Okay. Sexy LX. All right. I ain't mad at you, girl. Tracking my spending was key to me hitting my financial goals. All right. I, I like spreadsheets. I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't, I'm not doing that kind of budget. I'm just not. But having my spreadsheet with all of my debt when we had debt, you can't hide from that stuff, y'all. No. And then you put that, you put that sum at the end so you know the total amount. And when you see that number, look, ignorance is not bliss. It is not bliss. Uh, snowball plans or avalanche plans can't. Yeah. Automated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so let's just say, let's go back to the $500 that you've allocated. Let's say that first one that you're going to pay off is $68 a month. And the minimum payments for all your credit cards is 300, leaving you an extra 200. You will automate putting $268 towards that first credit card until it's paid off. 
okay? Once it's paid off, you turn off that automation, you take the 268 and add it to the minimum payment of the next credit card. And you change the automatic payment automation from the minimum payment and add back, add in that 268, all right? So it's automated until you pay it off. And then you've got to do the next one and mm -hmm. the next one, all right? Yeah, you can totally do that. So yeah, take advantage of the credit cards that offer points. Just remember, because the interest does apply if you don't pay them off. Even if you get a good interest rate, the best interest rates I've seen are 12%, 13%. That's still too much. Yeah. I have money Mondays. Okay, Raquel. When I check in weekly to stay in the zone, do affirmations, check my statements, and lock into my plan. They move to monthly on Mondays when everything is more automated. Okay. I'm not mad at you. I am not mad at you. I love it. We have something on our calendar for every Sunday afternoon um, where we go over the money and things like that and make sure that we're still on point. Love you, baby. Hey, Tanya. I owe you a call. I've been thinking about you. So Tanya's family, y'all, if you, if you haven't got that. All right. Greta says, if you have an Amex card, you can lock your you lock your card. However, it only locks for seven days. Yes. You may have to call them to request it locked longer. Okay. That's that's right. I was going to mention that. Thank you, Greta. Amex only lock for seven days. Jamila, I love to hear it. Once my student loan was forgiven. Congratulations. She took that money and started uh, putting into her emergency fund. Um, paid off her credit cards and increased her 401k. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Um, just observing says, forgive me for missing it, but where is the sign up for the Portugal meetup and activities? For our Black Utopia, 95% of the information can be found in the description below. All right. Um, I even tell you how to get our email address in the description below. And that's probably true for a lot of car, uh, a lot of channels. Amen to luxury, how easy. <laughs> so today was communal Sunday. First Sundays are communal Sundays. Did you guys get communion? We did at the spa. That's what we did. That's what we did. Not me. This is the beauty in aging, being your authentic self, right? That's all I'm saying. So yeah, we so we decided that one day a month. The girls are going to get together here and we're going to go do some spa treatments. I had a massage today. We had sauna. It was a very nice place. And the one hour, the one hour massage was the at a day spa in a hotel was the same price that I used to pay at those uh, chains like hand and snow stone all of those massage, Masha, massage envy, massage envy. Yeah. At places like that. Um, and they didn't come afterwards with tea and here's the relaxation room, lay back. We'll give you some tea and some, and some treats to like get your energy back up. Yeah, girl. There you go. <laughs> it was, I felt pampered. Talk about luxury. Ironically, now that I am debt free and have choices, I give folks more grace because my presence is at my discretion. I can leave and disengage whenever I want to do so, right? That is the freedom with Equifax. They're all telling us Equifax, 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 Equifax. See, we don't really deal with them anymore because they don't really deal with American credit companies. I mean, they might ask for it, but. They'll ask for it if you want, if you... If your, your credit score doesn't mean a whole lot here. No, it, it means a little bit, but not yeah, that not, much. Yeah, not that much like the state. Yes. Oh, all right. It's exquisite coils. All right. I hear you. I feel you. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Vicky, where would I find my tickets for the meetup boat ride? Because now I'm not sure if I bought them already. I hope I did. Baby, there's no tickets. That's the, I ain't no tickets. I got a list. I'm, I'm downloading the list from PayPal. And that's the list. All right. If you if you are in the WhatsApp group, you're on the list. Don't worry about it. If you got an email saying this is for confirmed ticket holders, you're on the list. Don't worry about it. If you did not get an email, check your spam. If it's not in your spam, send an email to me. 
hello at ourblackutopia.com. And, and we will see what happened. Having these financial information, the informationals are so helpful, y'all. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm going to go through a few more and then we're going to get to how you stay out of debt how you stay out of debt and avoid inflation or lifestyle inflation. So Latanya asked, this is the first time I heard of freezing my credit cards and with ma major credit bureaus, what does that do? So it prevents anybody from using your credit cards fraudulently, but it also prevents you from using your credit card until you turn it back on. But, you know, like I said, if you're having, if you know you're having a new, you put out for a new credit card and, Usually they'll send you a, something to mail saying, hey, you know, your credit card's on its way. Well, yeah, you, you want to lock it just to be safe. A lot of folks uh, run into trouble from physical mail. And, you know, I, I remember um, the people at the county were talking about um, the somebody at the post office was stealing it. Right. And then the people at the post office like, no, somebody is taking it out of your mailbox. Like nobody wants to take um, responsibility now. So that's freezing your credit card, freezing your credit, or locking your credit card, yeah. freezing your credit, freezing your credit means that no one can run checks on your credit. No one could apply for credit under your name or anything with any of the bureaus. As soon as it comes up they're, you know, they can't do it. They're denied. And it doesn't come back to working until you take that freeze off. Yeah. So this is a good question, CK. Um, I have heard of, first of all, definitely go ahead and freeze your credit. Um, our house is in a trust. So that puts an extra legal layer on the sale of my house. But yes, I have heard of people selling a house that where people are traveling the world, doing this and that, and they don't need to have any renters in there or what have you. Um, I would talk to an attorney because um, we've always had, like even the condo that we have in LA, um, there's workers in there now. My aunt and cousin are checking the mail every day. So the, the, the chance of that happening is slim, but all of our properties are in a trust, which puts an extra legal um, legal uh, layer that they would have to penetrate. Because in the United States, when you do a title run, the people who are on the title are gonna have to show up to sign off. Mm -hmm. And if it's in a trust, then, then there's extra paperwork that they're gonna have to show to prove that they are the legal person legal. representing right. that trust when the county where you have filed that paperwork is showing somebody different. The county is saying, this is the fiduciary for this trust and we have not found out anything differently. And when the title company runs that and says, okay, well, Halisi Vincent has to sign up. Ricardo Crawley has to sign off. They are the fiduciaries for this trust. Um, where are you at? Where are you at? Right. Now, uh, it, it helps, too, that I don't have a common name. It's hard to perpetrate Halisi Vincent when there's only one Halisi Vincent in the whole world. Um, yes, I keep my credit frozen. I saw something about protecting oneself against all the consumer and phone scams. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Diamond says, what do you think about balance transfer with credit cards? I was thinking about transferring one of credit card balances to another it has a lower interest rate. So we did talk about this. Yeah. Just make sure if they, they, they're good, they work, but just make sure you're not late for any payment or you miss a payment because all that interest comes oh, back. It accrues. It accrues and it comes back and you have to pay that. Exactly. And so um, we only transferred money that to a 0%, to a 0% right. offer. So anything that had 15%, 20%, 30%, well, we don't think yeah. that. I think we had 0% for 12 months. Or we, we did it a couple I of times. I wouldn't do it for any less than a year. Yeah, we did it a couple of times over the years. Um, some that he doesn't even know about. <laughs> I'm transferring balances so I can pay that stuff off because, you know, 
Um, but but in the final days, I think we had that one that was like a year to 18 months. Yeah. We paid it off early. We put we look, if it was five thousand that we were transferring, take that five thousand yeah. divided by not 18 months, 17 months. And whatever that adds up to, that's what you put automated. And what they usually do, too, is they'll send you checks. I guess it's just a thing to also send you checks. I always destroy the checks because it's too easy to forget and let them lay around and some and they're live. Yeah. And yeah. people can use them. So I it, just always got rid of the checks. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Debbie uh, suggests home title lock. I would, I would, in, I, I think this is something to investigate. I know that my mom did it and it was like $15 a month. And, and I was so pissed. I was like, take that shit off. It, you know, um, because it's, it, it was in the trust and, yeah. you know, I would Google, I would Google, how do you lock the title before I would pay somebody? Because even the person, like when you lock, when you lock your identity, identity lock or whatever, the person who who came up with the first company of identity locking, and he used to put his social security number on online on TV in his commercials. This is how much I'm confident that you know we can protect your your identity. Had his identity stolen, so. Um, so yeah, did you hire an attorney to do your trust or did you use an online service? Um, we had an attorney, but we used a service through my job. Like, and we always say, if you work for a, a company and they offer for pennies on the dollar or whatever, you know, monthly taking out his check, what? I don't think it was over a dollar. It was about $2.16 okay. per paycheck. You know, per paycheck, and they'll take that out, and you get uh, uh, attorneys yeah. know, to, to come in and do different things, and they do it. Yeah, so a lot of companies offer, as a benefit, legal services. Take advantage. Look and see if your company has mm -hmm. it. Um, take advantage of it. Obviously, the enrollment period is usually around the same time as health insurance yeah. and all of that stuff in the fall. Um but we learned from another YouTuber. It's like, wait, we've yeah. seen that. Take advantage we, of it. We have seen, we saw that legal service for the 10 years or whatever his company was offering yeah. it. It never and did. Like, I ain't never getting did. in no trouble. I don't need, not thinking about civil stuff. Yeah. Even when you got into a car accident, we could have hired them for that yeah. and not having a third of our money taken away. Right? By an attorney I went out and hired. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't didn't think about that. And and I mean, they 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 cover you for criminal stuff, too. Not I mean, you can't go out and commit mass murder and expect them to cover you. They're not going to do that. But for different things, for very, very especially good civil civil. You want them to write wills. You want them to, you know, do trust. You want them to do all that stuff. They take care of and minor criminal. Uh, like a DUI yeah. or something like that, right? They'll do that. They, usually they cover that that kind of thing as but, well. But it's truly worth it because it costs mm -hmm. a lot of money to have. And I tried, Krishan, I tried to do the trust with one of those online tools and it was just too confusing and I wasn't sure that I was doing the right thing. So it was it was really lovely. And and here here again, guys, it's not as expensive as you think. So by the time we got to L.A. to put that house into a trust because um, we had to do a we had. Well, no, it's our trust. But to put that house into the trust, we had to do file that with the L.A. County people um, to do all of that. She charged us about seven hundred dollars. It was more than that. Uh, about nine. Yeah, it was okay. close to a thousand dollars. Okay, about a thousand dollars. But that all. But then what she threw in was power of attorney for my mom, the health stuff for my mom, and she did all of that for us too, with that thousand dollars. Worth it, right? And then filed the paperwork with the county, et cetera, et cetera. So, all right. 
I have home title lock. It protects my title and deed from being sold or stolen. Yeah, that's what they say they're going to do. And so I would say, folks, Google it. It works the same as LifeLock. Google and see if there are other things that you can do that are cost free before I would pay for a service. And then if you find not yeah. and that makes you feel comfortable, go for it. Put it, just put it in the budget. Halicia and Ray K. Karen Louise, at times, especially during stressful and emotional times, I impulse buy. Yeah, not yeah. often, thank goodness. But I want to eliminate that awful habit entirely. What tips do you offer to stop it? Here's, and I was, I did therapy shopping online and in person. Ooh, let me just stop by, you know, the loft. Let me just stop by Nordstrom Rack and just see what's on sale. I'm not, I'm not going to buy anything. I just want to see. Yeah, right. Where you at? <laughs> Nordstrom Rack. Perusing. Find my iPhone. Oh, she did Nordstrom Rack. <laughs> Here we go. However, once I realized, this is for me, once I realized that all of my dreams could come true. And when I say that, that means adjusted dreams because my initial dream was to be Beyonce before Beyonce probably was <clears> born, <throat> right? To be a singer, I'm going to sing, I'm going to do that and do this and that and the other. But it's not that I love singing. But I didn't love performing, per se. And I liked the reaction of the audience, but I didn't need that for happiness, right? And so the dream to become a singer was really about the ability to have the money for freedom. And once I realized that I could have that same freedom and that it was attainable, a lot more quickly and 100% within my control because, you know, especially back in the day before YouTube, I had to get a, a contract with somebody to, to make the kind of money that we're talking about, right? Once I realized that that freedom that I thought I would get from becoming a superstar, which is interesting because Beyonce and Jay-Z are not free. They can't just say, you want to go to the movies? Let's just go to the movies. <laughs> No, they've got to have a whole entourage. It's got to be a whole thing. Rent they probably the don't go. Out, so, they yeah. rent the whole movie house out, right? Like they just can't just pick up and and then go out looking all toe up. And TMZ is out there. That that's, kind of, that kind of money I'd have a theater in my house. I wouldn't have. To oh well, that's probably what they do, right? And the studio just sends them. They can't even go out to the movie and enjoy a movie with everyone else and get that experience because some movies do need to be experienced with other people. Mm -hmm. That's not freedom, but that's what I thought I wanted. And, and it really was about the money necessary to create the freedom to not have to deal with nonsense. Once I realized I could have that financial freedom and not have to deal with most nonsense without giving up my uh, autonomy, like, you know, superstars have to, um, or, or my soul, like some superstars have to, it was really easy to give up the bling bling shoes at Nordstrom. It was really easy to not do the thing on Amazon. And now here's the thing, Karen Louise, what I would do when I got that feeling is I say, hmm, what's Apple doing today? What's, what is Nvidia doing today? Maybe I will buy some more Apple stock. Yeah, I've got an extra hundred dollars. I'm gonna buy some more Apple stock. And when that thing would come through and go ping, you own more Apple stock. I would get the same feeling as when I bought my bling bling shoes. Yeah. So spend money on stock. That's my suggestion. What do you say? I would pretty much say that the same thing. Spend money on something that's going to make you some money. Yeah. I mean, you've yeah. never been a big shopper or anything like that. No. I with, mean, I have my thing with tennis the gadgets. Shoes. Gadgets and gadgets, tennis shoes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, you know, once you know that what you want is attainable and you've got that goal and you're on plan, it was really easy. And when I got that itch, I'm telling you, for me, I got that same thrill from buying stock. All right, y'all, we're going to hold off right there and we're going to get to what you've been waiting for. All right. How do you stay out of debt? 
And this is one of the things I think it, I think it was Aging Grateful who asked us, you said, y'all should talk about how you stay out of debt once you're out of debt, right? And the key to that is to avoid lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep. So. Find it. Did you find it? Bro. Two. There it is. There it is right there. Oh, I didn't yeah. underline it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now that you're out of debt, we want to make sure you don't get back into debt. So number one. The number one thing, and this is the this is not just our number one, this is one of the number one things is if you have not increased your emergency fund, <laughs> you need to do it. Yes. To at least the minimum of a year. Yeah. All right. Expenses. You need to do it. One year expenses. So again, if you're dealing with the healthcare system in the United States, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you, like get the best health insurance you can afford to pay for yeah. is what I say. But other than that, you know, your car breaks down, you know, you need new brakes, all of that stuff. Like Rick used to joke that when we went to the, <laughs> oh, to, the to my and I love I loved our mechanic. He was fantastic. mechanic. He is fantastic. Yeah, he still is fantastic, but he is expensive. But he's not as expensive as the dealership. No, not as a dealership. And when he fixes, it's fixed. It's fixed. And if it's not, he fixes it again until it's So if you're in Denver, out of auto service auto, house yeah. off of Quebec is the place. And I'm tell I've been we've been going there for 20 years. When he fixes it, it's fixed. And a couple of times I'm like, dang, that's expensive. I took it to the dealer. They they were trying to charge me double. I'm like, let me just go back to my what am I tripping off of? I used to always ask you, you gonna go on vacation? <laughs> what am I tripping off of? You need some money. What am I tripping off of? So uh, let me take uh, Carol Louise's thing off. So emergency funds, that $500, you know, you need new tires, right? That six, seven, eight hundred dollars You don't want to charge that if you cannot pay it off at the end of the month. If you can, go ahead and charge it. But if you can't, that's where your emergency fund comes in, right? It also is important if you get laid off or something like that. But really... Over and above, you know, emergency fund, we also had money set aside for things like that. So we had our two years living expenses, which was really, really, really for layoffs. And then we had a little bit of money set aside, 3000 4000 5000 bucks set aside just in a regular old savings account. Unfortunately, probably should have put it in a high, they didn't have no high yield savings account back in those days. There was no mm -hmm. such thing as a high yield savings account because the interest rates were just too low. Um, so we just had it in a regular savings account. And that is what we would use for, you know, oh, shoot, blown tires. And when you have all wheel drive, you can't just replace one tire. you got to replace all the tires, all right. et cetera, et cetera. So number one, have your emergency fund and increase it. So we said minimum three months for a single worker or a partner worker. So two workers in a household. Um, six months for a single person who is still working and two, two years, years, right? For mm -hmm. folks who are going to retire early, who are at Coast Fi or something like that. Um, it Coast Fi, that's finan fire, financial independence, retire early. Coast Fi means that you don't necessarily need to save anymore, but there's some, you need some income, a little income coming in. And set up everything. On auto. Yep. Again, auto, auto transfers. Yeah. That's going. That's going to save the day. Number two, continue using the budget platforms that we were talking about, right? Um, and so, like Empower is one of them. I just forgot what what Tasha. Adelia said. Toshel. T O S H L. Toshel is, is one it, of them. Is it capital. Well, Capital One is now Empower. No. No uh, capital investments or something. Oh, capital like investments. Oh, maybe. And even like Fidelity has has some tools on their site. So if you've got a Fidelity account, they have some tools. Um, Schwab may even have some tools, if I remember correctly, for budgeting. So you want to continue to look at that, right? And make sure that you are on point. When we um, started this YouTube channel, y'all know we had we went from negative 22,000 to 800,000 plus in net worth. 
We kept using that too because our goal was to become a millionaire within the next year. And we did it. We did it by increasing income, right? That helps. Uh, our investments going up, that helps. Um, we didn't increase our income income, but rental mm -hmm. income and stuff like that. Not by working. Um, so number one, emergency fund. Increase it to at least a year if you haven't done this. This is how you stay out of debt. All right. Make sure that you have a good, healthy emergency fund. Number two, continue using the budgeting platforms to make sure that your money is going where you think it's going. All right. Every dollar has a job. Right. Number three. If you do this, you won't have to go back in debt. Ever? Ever? Ever, ever. <laughs> so we talked about this in the other thing, but this is so important. Decide how much money you will save and invest monthly and automate that process. This is the thing. This is the thing that is going to keep you out of debt. This is also the thing that will help you avoid lifestyle creep. Because let's just say you have, uh, you're going to retire, right? And you've got a $3,000 uh, pension or social security check or a combination of the two. You start a side hustle. That side hustle money is supposed to be for um, paying off a house or is supposed to be for uh, future splurges because you know you got a bad knee and you want to take first class all the time or whatever. Future perks. <laughs> Future perks, right? <laughs> Whatever that amount is, if you decide I'm living off of 3000 or I'm living off of 3100 whatever is left over, whatever that gap is, just take it off the top and put it right into your brokerage account, right into your high-yield savings account or something like that, right off the top, all right? Right off the top. Mm. And then that way, what is left in your checking account is what you have to spend, and that's it. That's it. And you know um, that you will never have, you know, you will never have to worry about having uncollateralized debt because you've got that money set aside right. for if stuff, if the fit hits the sham. All right. Um, now, avoiding lifestyle creep, the mental part. <laughs> Don't settle. Don't settle. You know, if you compare yourself to the Joneses, you are living the life that somebody you think somebody else thinks you need to live. Don't settle for that. Don't. Do not settle for that. We people will try to influence you. They will. Now, what you need to be doing. Yeah. If I was you. <laughs> if I was you, <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> if you were me, no, you wouldn't. You know, and the thing about it is we live more modestly now. Oh, yeah. Than we did before. Uh, we travel a lot more, but our home and everything else is much more modest than it, and and yet we are happier than we've ever been. Yeah. I am. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Good to hear. Don't let fear make you settle for saddling yourself with too much house or saddled with saddled to your home country. All right. So fear. It could take the form of, I don't want to be homeless. Mm -hmm. But if it is subconscious, listen to the things that you are telling yourself. Are you saying, if I'm not an attorney, who am I? If I'm not a doctor, who am I? If I'm not senior vice president of such and so-and-so, who am I? Right? If I don't have my McMansion, who am I? If I, right, if I don't have the Porsche Cayenne, who am I? Yeah. Listen to what you are telling yourself and don't saddle yourself thinking that you have to have a McMansion to be happy. Now, if you have a big family and you like to have big family gatherings and this and that and the other, and you don't just have them twice a year because you can rent an Airbnb for that nonsense. Yeah. But you you have Sunday dinner every like the whole family. That's your thing. Okay, then invest in the house, right? 
But if that's not your jam and you really want to travel, why are you holding on to the McMansion? Yeah. Let somebody else do that. Yeah. And you go to there. And you, right, let some other family member host that, that stuff. You go, and they got to clean up, right? Because you know, even though auntie so-and-so and them help you clean up, <laughs> there's always more to do. There's always more to do because they don't clean like you clean. The third part of not settle. Have a list of wants and needs. Yeah. If you're not having to dip into your emergency fund or your future you fund, right? Indulge your wants to your heart's content, all right? Once you have scraped that money off the top, if you figured out how to live that much less under your means and every month you have an extra $500,000, mm -hmm. spend it. Spend it because you've already decided for future you, you need to be setting aside $1,000 a month and, you, and the money's coming in and you've got an extra $1,000 a month. Treat yourself or save it to treat yourself for something else. Indulge, right? This is a way that you don't feel like you are missing out and that you still have treats in your life and you're not just living this austere life with, you know, one fork, one spoon and a plate, <laughs> right? And, one, and, and a movie twice a year as your entertainment? No, that's not what we're talking about. But what we are talking about is that if you make sure that every dollar earned already has a job before it hits your pocket, then lifestyle creep is almost impossible. It's almost impossible. And I say almost because you've got to automate it. You've got to make sure, for me, i got to make sure it doesn't touch my hands. Because if it's in these paws, all bets are off. See, no, I'm not like that. It's just digital for him. It's digital. <laughs> Maybe you want, wait, di didn't you just buy a case? What is this case? And that case no, over there. No, 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 and then we got minute. all these accessories. They're, those cases come with that stuff. And those are, that's old. You see that look in his face. <laughs> but when we brought when we bought the drone, we had already decided if X, if Y, if Z, then we will get the drone. Yeah. This is what has to happen. This is how much money we have to have coming in for for these projects. And if that happens, then you know we can invest in the drone. Every dollar has a job. Every dollar has a job. If your wants necessitate dipping into those funds, ask yourself why. Why you want that thing or experience? Why do you want that thing? Why do you need that experience? And is there a less expensive way to create, yeah, to create that. Yeah. that same feeling? Is there a less expensive way to have that same experience? All right. So you, it's really important to know the difference between needs and wants. Housing, transportation, health care, and food. Those are needs. 95% of the people watching right now probably do not need to buy another piece of clothing for the rest of their lives. If they maintain the same weight, they maintain the same yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, really, right? So, uh, besides shoes that I wear out and socks and underwear, like, I if if I still had all of the clothes that I gave away, I would never have to. If I didn't care about fashion and being in fashion, I would never have to buy another thing. Mm -hmm. There were so many things that I had never worn, or I'd only worn once or twice or three times. Y'all know. Y'all know. So, um, okay. So is there a less expensive way to achieve the same results? For instance, our move to Europe in order to live the life we want. Okay. So that was a less expensive way to have the same experience. What was the experience we wanted? Retirement, baby. Mm -hmm. Not having to show up at somebody's job. The other experience we want is the ability to be able to travel on the money that we had saved, on the money that we would have coming in. Right. The only way mm -hmm. to travel to the places that we wanted to travel is to live near those places. Close to it. 
And it just so happened that we could have that life in Europe. Had we stayed in the United States, we still would have had to be working. So when your wants necessitate dipping into your emergency fund, dipping into your future you fund, you've got to ask yourself, is there another way to achieve the same results? All right. Number five. Practice gratitude. And this is so, so important. It's really easy to say, I have a four bedroom, four bath house, and now I'm living in a three bedroom, one bath apartment. This is not what I signed up for. But why do two people need a four bedroom, four bath house? We can only use one bathroom at a time. <laughs> why do we need four bathrooms? Stand. Be nice to have two. It would be nice to have two. Case one's occupied. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, four, no. Right? Necessary. All that room is not necessary. It's not necessary. It's so, just us. so we were paying every month to have 1,500 extra square feet that usually did not even see our presence in the week, much less the day. 1,500 extra square feet that we never really used, but was housing a bunch of junk. Mm -hmm. And we were paying for it month after month after month after month. And so is there a less expensive way to achieve those same results? Number five, practice gratitude. Mm -hmm. It's easier to live below your means if you remind yourself of how fortunate is it is that you have what you do have. And I wake up every day once I come to um, and, uh, shake the the cobwebs, and and I say some grat I say some gratitude, some some affirmations, and some thank yous in my mind every single morning. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for this. Thank you, Father God, for that. Thank you, Father God, for this. And sometimes it's just thank you, Father God, for waking me up. But I get to wake up in Portugal every single morning that I'm not traveling. And that in and of itself is a blessing. That in and of itself is a blessing. The fact that, you know, like when we were in Johannesburg, South Africa, and I wanted to walk to the store to get some butter, he did not want to let me leave or milk or whatever the heck I want to get. Butter. He didn't want to let me leave in the daytime. It wasn't safe. I can go out, especially before daylight savings time. I, I say, you sweetheart, you know, I need butter to, to, to make this thing I want. I'm, I'll see you in a second. He's like, oh, okay. Doesn't barely pay attention. And I leave, I walk to the store and I, and I feel safe for the most part. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to have my head on the swivel. Right. And so I am so grateful for this three bedroom, one bath apartment that we are paying uh, half of what we paid for our mortgage or less. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and it is more than enough room. So being able to travel as much as we want, not having to worry about the bills, not having to worry about the bill, not having to worry about bills. I used to say, if I don't, if I didn't have money problems, I wouldn't have any problems. So for those who say money doesn't buy happiness. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Now, there does reach a point of diminishing returns. I'm not saying that. You have to know when enough is enough. But I'm going to tell you, uh, having to go to work every day, living paycheck to paycheck, wondering if I have enough to pay these bills and pay that emergency uh, uh, room bill or something like that, that's not fun. That's not life. I wasn't grateful for that. But today, knowing we've got floors being done in Los Angeles in our condo and, and this and that and the other going on. And we just came back from South Africa and we're going to go to Aveiru, Aveiru in a couple of weeks. Bills are paid. Yeah. Bills are paid and there is nothing like that feeling. So if you wake up every morning and take time to feel what it feels like to be debt free, which for me meant almost stress free. Yeah. Why would you want to go back? Why would you want to go back? 
right? And that's what we have for you today. If you need more help, and we're going to get to the, to the question, but if you need more help with this, Beyond the Bling, Money Mindset Makeover for Financial Independence will walk you through these steps and a lot more to sign up. It's in the information below. As I said, I am updating it. Um, it's not going to be tremendously different, but either way, if you buy it now, you'll get the updated version as well. So, but it will be more expensive tomorrow. Not tomorrow, tomorrow, but tomorrow, once I get it updated. So Beyond the Bling, Money Mindset Makeover, in the description below, side hustle challenge. There may still be one spot available if someone hasn't gotten it already. Information is below. Information for the meetup is below. And now let's see what you guys are talking about. Um, Karen Louise, I, I know you know who we are. I'm not worried about misspelled names, baby. Don't worry about it. Okay, Debbie, it actually worked for me because someone did try to steal my title. All right now. Yeah, I know it works, <laughs> even though in, in LifeLock works too. But it was kind of funny that somebody found out how to hack their way around that. The guy who owns LifeLock or owned uh, or the founder of LifeLock or whatever. Um, now, I was trying to sell my home at this, at this time and they stopped it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, we have to go through so many hassles because there's bad guys. Mm hmm she shreds those credit card checks. Yeah, well, shred them if you don't need them. Definitely yeah, shred them if you don't need them. them. I, I get rid of. But if you want, if you need to do a, a balance transfer, utilize that stuff. Transfer that money to a zero percent interest now. Fifty, you know, just think about that. That that um, um, description I gave you earlier. If you if your minimum payment is sixty eight dollars, and fifty eight of the sixty eight is interest. You can take that same $68 with a 0% interest and all $68 goes towards the principal, right? You can pay it off that much faster. Hey, MT, how do you feel about home ownership in regards to retirement? I am on the fence about mortgage, mortgaging a home. I plan to travel, but I worry about having a home base in the U.S. I'm in my very early 40s, baby, young enough to be our child. Hey, MT. Um If you want to maintain a home base and if you don't have a, a home right now um, and you want to invest in a home, we, we suggest that you never invest in a single family home. Now, we have single family homes because we know no better. But if I had to do all over again, I would get a duplex, triplex or, or fourplex. Yeah, multifamily. Right. And um, depending upon my budget, et cetera, and, and my tolerance for dealing with other folks, but at least a duplex. That way, as you're traveling, if you, if you do it right and you save enough money, save like as opposed to 3%, right? Depending upon what, what rents you can get. So do the research, all right? So like in Denver, if we had uh, a, three, uh, a three bedroom, two bath duplex, but on both sides, both sides, three bedroom, two bath, which you can find all day long in Denver. Um, mm -hmm. We could probably get no less than about 22 to 2,500 for the three bedroom, two bath. Right. Now that's about the mortgage, right? On a $400,000 house, that's about the mortgage, right? So depending upon how much you have to put down, even if, even if, let's just say today, you can get the $2,500 for one side, but your mortgage is $3,000 or your mortgage is $3,300. Now you're only having to pay $700 to maintain that because somebody else is paying $2,500 of your mortgage. You see what I'm saying? So if you feel like you need a home base, um, that is something to consider. Right. Um, what the other thing that you can do is why, if you leave for big stretches of time, you can Airbnb your side if your city allows that. So that's something else to consider. You can do short-term rentals. If you plan on traveling for six months at a time, you can do a six month rental with traveling nurses or something like that and let them not only pay your mortgage, but pay you some extra money right. for the privilege. Okay. 
So um, single family homes, no multifamily homes are a, a better bet and, and, and a true investment. Buying a home for yourself is not an investment. Buying a multifamily home is an investment because it produces income. Okay. An investment has to produce income or it's not an investment. It's a waste of money. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. I don't think I have anything to add to that. Anything you want to add? No, that's pretty much it. We wouldn't buy another single family. No. Mm -mm. Nope. Not in a million years. My stop buying test questions. Can I take this with me while I travel? Karen Louise, we know you're not staying in the States, baby. How much crap do you want to bring? How yeah. much crap do you want to bring? Or are you just going to end up giving it away or, or trying to figure out how to sell it, right? Um, Debbie, thank you guys very much for your advice. By my calculations, my two loans should be paid off in one year. My budget is on point. Okay. Baby girl will be out of college. Then I am free. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. We love it. I haven't been inside of a mall in years. <laughs> if you move to Portugal, you will. Um, but it doesn't look. I go to the mall for specific things that I know, like I need, you know, we need some batteries, we need a charger, you know, I need a new pair of slippers and, you know, so I know I can find it all in one place because it's really hard to find all, there's like the super target, this, you can find it all at a super target, right? But that's not a thing that's not here. A thing. So that's the only reason I got the same feeling when I seen people standing in line at the Nike store when I bought Nike stock. Right? Y'all, uh, we bought Ulta stock. I was like, look at Ulta all crowded up in there. Keep buying that stuff, y'all. Keep buying that stuff. <laughs> right? Okay, I thought it was just me. I thought it was just me, but I really would get a quick thrill. It says, okay, <laughs> you now own two more shares, you know. Oh, you're going on a pet sit in Denver. Okay. Oh, cool. Very good. Okay, so CK says, what is um, the emergency fund percentage if one has a pension? We have a pension. The same. The same. Um, here's the thing. If it is a government pension, we have to assume that the United States government and every state government is going to remain functional for the next 10 to 20 years. If it is a company pension, we have to assume that they're not going to put somebody now. There are laws around how companies manage the money that is in the pension, but we also know that there are loopholes and we know that companies have mismanaged pensions as well as governments, right? Mismanaged pensions and they go away or they get lessened, right? This is a fact. So, uh, I still say two years. If something happened and uh, your pension went away, um, if that company, like, what was it? What was the what was the Southern Energy Company that got into all those all that trouble back in the late nineties? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You y'all know what I'm talking about, and everybody lost their pensions, right? Now, laws were put in place because of that, right? That the people who are actually doing the accounting can't also be the auditing company auditing themselves. <laughs> that was Arthur Anderson doing the auditing, right? Um, law, but guess what? Those same laws have been, um, the teeth have been taken out of them right. under Trump, which means it could happen again. The laws that prevented the predatory lending um, that were enacted under Obama, the, a lot of the teeth have been taken out of them under Trump. And so stuff can happen. Stuff can happen. And I say plan for the worst, plan for the worst, hope for the best. 
plan for the worst, hope for the best, right? Yeah, personal capital is now in power. That was Enron, wasn't it? Enron. I Enron. knew it started with an E. Yeah. Enron. Enron lost Arthur Anderson. They lost their pensions. So um, I have not heard of government failures, but this we are in interesting times. Trying times. We are in very interesting times. So... I've gone through shoes, now the clothes. What is the best site to sell them on? Y'all, we're going to crowdsource this because I was too stressed out to sell my stuff. I know of Poshmark. I know of Facebook Marketplace. Etsy. Um, Etsy. Etsy's usually for new stuff, for but, stuff, but. Um, uh, obviously eBay um, and, and places like that. But if y'all have any other help Winnie out, Help Winnie out because unfortunately, y'all, I was just giving stuff away. He he went to Goodwill with like 20 suits. I don't know if they ever made it into the store. I'm sure they didn't. <laughs> right. I don't know if they ever made it into the store. Woo. So Care007 says, I work in healthcare and those will be the best tenants. She's probably talking about traveling nurses, being near a hospital and renting to doctors in training is another population that you can consider. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, MT says, thank you. Maybe I will just continue to rent or purchase a home with my investments um, during retirement. I cannot handle being a landlord. You could always get a management company. If you can find a duplex for under market value, right? Um, and you can if it's grandma's and all it needs is some lipstick and rouge, you know, a couple, a little bit of updating here and there, right? Um, you could hire a management company, you know? Um, so I wouldn't throw, I wouldn't throw it out yet. And, um, and again, yeah, I would not throw the idea out yet. If you're going to purchase a place during retirement, then you're going to save up all of the money now and, and and pay cash or near cash for a single family home if that's what you choose to do. Um, right now for, for us, you all know we were saving for a building to purchase here. We are still saving that money, but I don't know. Enron, 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 y'all remembered. Um, all right. We're at the S. Dress for success. Ah, thank you. Yes, dress for success, I think is is donations, right? Um, where they help women who are getting back into the mm -hmm. job market and stuff like that. Um, Fab Life sells on Poshmark. Very good. Check your local resale stores, Crossroads, Buffalo Exchange, et cetera. Yeah. Also, um, like near our house in Denver, there were consignment shops. If you've got um, high end designer stuff. There are consignment shops and things like that. If you've got the time, rider skater has Portugal become far more expensive than you thought it would be. Nope. And I know you two did consider Spain before deciding on Portugal and regret to picking for any regrets. I think you meant, uh, nope, no, <laughs> nope. Um, so we've been here for a minute, right? Like this June, this will be our third June. And um, and we signed a three-year lease that did not get updated from the one-year lease we signed. So we're still paying the same amount that we were paying um, when we first got here. So that helps. Um, it probably was more expensive when we first got here because we didn't know what we didn't know. And we didn't know how to find the deals, right? Right. And so like for Portugal, the cottage, the cottage industry is still very much alive. And so you're going to find your best deals at the mom and pop shops, which is just the opposite as it is in the United States. Um, our Portuguese friends have told us how to figure out if it's um, um, the pricing in restaurants and things like that, if it's tourist pricing or if it's local pricing. And so now that we know, you know, you look for the plate of the day, the prato do dia in the local restaurants and stuff like that. We try to avoid the chains and um, and the better food is at the mom and pops anyway. And mm -hmm. right. Oh, my gosh. Sometimes I pass by. I'm like, I'm full. And so, oh, it smells good. 
Um, but you'll, you know, you could have a full spread and, and everybody has drinks and this, this, that, and the other. And for two, three, four people, and it still might only be 20 euro, 22 euro, 25 euro, seriously. So, um, no, it is not more expensive than we thought it was. Um, lifestyle creep can happen, like, you know, not taking public transportation and taking more Ubers, not because it's raining, not because it's late, just because, just because. <laughs> you know, because I don't feel like, you know, things like that we, we do have to watch. But in general, no. Um, any regrets about Portugal over Spain? No. Not at all. There's something for to me, there is something magical about Portugal, and I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But one of the things that I didn't realize was so important, and I was talking about this today, is the fact that we blend in. We blend in, and people assume that we're Portuguese. Today, when we had we went to this high-end four-star uh, hotel. And I mean, it was posh. It was as posh as I've ever seen. And we went for our massages. The massage ladies were black, both of them, both of them. I like that. I like to see that it, it, um, that we are not viewed as immigrants or tourists on first glance. The assumption is we're Portuguese. We belong here and we're not walking wallets. So absolutely no regrets. Um, I find that the Portuguese, in my experience, have been much kinder than the folks in Spain. Yeah. Not necessarily more friendly, but kinder, right? Going out of their way to help. And, and this is not a one-time thing. No, I, everyone that I've talked to has said this. People here will go out of their way to help you. And it's happened to me so many times now that I can't even count. And um, it, it's a good feeling. It really is. Yes, I am just about, uh, I think this means to be retired. To be retired. Becca. And as a travel nurse, you rent high because the companies pay rent well above for their nurses. All right, Becca, thank you for that information. See, now who was it who was talking about um, they don't know if they want to be a landlord. The forty-year-old MT. MT. Um, MT. Short-term renting is different than long-term renting. Short-term renting usually is going to be less wear and tear on your home, and you can charge higher rents because, like Becca says, the company's paying. The company's paying. So. Things to consider. Raquel asks, I visited Portugal last year before I knew of the two of you. No problem. I'm a retired military officer with a pension. Yes, plus 100% disability. I gain custody of my three teenage nieces. How are the schools there? Let's go. Um, I don't have no kids, Raquel. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what other people say. Um, the international schools, by and large, tend to be good. The, the schools in general tend to be a lot more nurturing than what we're used to. Um, we have had parents tell us, you know, the kids get hugs at school. Their kids, and these are all Black people, their kids get hugs at school from the teachers. Now, you might get uh, not not just written up, but sued for molestation in the United States for giving a kid a hug, right? Kid just scraped his knee and you ain't gonna give him a hug, but they get morning hug. Everybody, good morning, Halisi. Good morning, Rick. Good morning. I mean, like, this was like kindergarten, first grade, but still. Yeah, we haven't heard anything I've heard, negative or anything. I've heard a couple of negative I things. Heard um, not about the quality of education, but incidents, specific incidents. I've heard of specific incidents. Um, I was told, we were told a couple of days ago that the international schools in Coimbra are less expensive and better than they are in Lisboa, in Lisbon, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is all anecdotal, um, but if you want us to put you in touch with some parents, we can do that. Um, so just let us know. 
MT says, okay, I will definitely look into property management options. Good, right? Turn over every stone before you say no, especially if you want to maintain a home in the in States, the States or, something, yeah. or something. I speak Italian. I'm wondering if there's financial downside of moving to Italy versus Portugal. I would check out Italy's politics and I would definitely visit now a financial downside as in it's more expensive. I don't remember it necessarily being more expensive in the tourist area, maybe um, because Italy ha by and large or historically has gotten more tourists than Portugal. And so they're used to gouging. Whereas here in Portugal, still the majority of tourists are other Portuguese coming from other places in Portugal. So what we see here in Lisbon, as far as tourists go, the majority of them are actually Portuguese. So they can only charge so much. So in the tourist areas in Italy, I would say it are more expensive than the tourist areas in Portugal. But they just elected somebody crazy in Italy. And I know that we had an increase in the conservative party here, but it's nothing like Italy. So that's something that I would check out. Um, and before moving, I would go for at least a month and live there and feel what it feels like. How is the reception? How are you feeling? Are people being helpful? Mm -hmm. um, is the language thing going to be that much of a barrier? You know, oh, you speak Italian. So that's no biggie. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing. So if you speak Italian, then you know Italy because um, okay. most people don't study it, it, Italian. Um, but financially, I don't know. I look at their tax schemes as well. Look at their tax schemes and see if you can talk to like, are there any non-habitual residence tax schemes for new immigrants like they had here in Portugal? Um, I know that some of the other countries in the EU that needed uh, an influx of folks, when Portugal got rid of their non-habitual resident tax scheme or altered it dramatically, they started trying to take advantage by creating their own tax scheme mm -hmm. that would compete because Portugal was sucking up all of the new immigrants. Like it was like four to one compared to Greece, Spain, and Italy. Um, and yet, in comparison to the majority of large countries or, or large cities in the United States, it's still less expensive. Even with the crazy rent prices here in Lisbon, it is still less expensive overall mm -hmm. to live here. And I still say you can find deals. Travel, travel nurse is best for rental. Um, the companies pay rent for their nurses way more than a regular renter would pay. I've been a travel nurse and just retired early last Friday. Yes. Congrats, Becca. Yes. Join the club. Join the club. You guys have a Brazilian steakhouse in Lisbon? Of course we do. Houses. They're on every other corner. Um. I went by the one we go to all the time. Brazilian. Uh -huh. It was full. Yeah. It was full. Yeah. Um, there, I. it seems to me that 10% of all the restaurants are Brazilian. Um, they're not necessarily Brazilian steakhouse, but they're Brazilian. But they do have the Brazilian steakhouses as well as the, you know, the ones where it's kind of an all you can eat with all these meats coming around and stuff like that. Right. Those are here as well. Um, there are a lot of Brazilians here. What's the overall feedback you're hearing about Chega? Are the native Portuguese concerned or not that much? We're still doing research, babe. We're still doing research. We're just saying today, I want to talk to some of my Portuguese friends. I ask every Portuguese person who's willing to talk about it, how do they feel about it? And the people who talk to me are like, they feel like, they're never going to be in the majority, but I, but you and I know that we should never rest our laurels. Never right? say never, yeah. Um, but that's their feeling. That's their feeling. Diversify globally. Kitco News: American Dream is dead. Top passports and ways to protect your wealth. Oh, is this a is this a, an article, uh, Mary? That we need to check out. He advises to diversify banks, homes in countries that treat us respect. That's all I'm saying. 
That's all I'm saying. All right, y'all, we're at two, over two hours. So we're going to let you go. Because I found my way to your and have been so, in, I guess, to your channel, Vicki, and have been so enlightened and motivated, I know my future is going to look much brighter. Thank you guys right. so much for everything. Yes. And we'll talk to you on Wednesday. Yeah, definitely. So, y'all, I don't think there's any more questions. Okay, there's a few more. Okay, I will ask. Italy, uh, as for the for the time, run by far right. Yeah, it was a bit controlled from the EU, a bit out of control. Um, so you can't do far right things they promised before elections. I'm not sure. Um, there's probably some typos in there, Becca. Um, sorry about that. Greece has serious racial issues, right? Yeah, Ryder Skater says Greece has serious racial issues. Yeah, Greece was lovely. He is an Irishman, a YouTube program. Okay. All right. So what um so what rapper MD said that that was a he's a YouTuber, so you can look that up. Um, so we are going to let you go. Um anything more? Language barriers. No. So here in Portugal, um, even at the spa today, of course it was in a hotel. Um, she spoke English. They spoke English, but we asked for them to sp speak to us in Portuguese. And then when we didn't understand, they would repeat it in English because we're trying to pr practice our Portuguese. Now, Rick would have said English only. <laughs> so we are going to let you go. This is how you get out of debt. This is how you stay out of debt. So just to reiterate, staying out of debt and avoiding lifestyle inflation. Increase your emergency fund to at least a year. Continue using your budgeting platform, something like Tasho or Empower. If you do this, you will never have to get back, go back into debt. Decide how much money you want to invest monthly, even in retirement, and scrape it off the top automatically, right? Yeah. Um, do that with your emergency fund too. Once we started doing that, the money started piling up. We never had to use our credit cards for an emergency ever, ever again. And then lastly, or number four, don't settle. Don't settle for a life that you don't want. Don't settle for, li for living up to other people's expectations of what your life should look like. Don't settle for that, right? Um, and then number five, practice gratitude. And with that, you can avoid lifestyle creep and remain out of debt. We love y'all. Everything that you need to know is in the description below. And we will see you on Thursday. See you Thursday. Bye.